Can you brew with a yeast and you don't even know what that yeast is? Well, I'm going to today. I'm gonna to tell you a little bit about how and what right after you hit that like and subscribe button, grab yourself a beer and we're gonna get after it. So a couple weeks ago on one of my live videos, I was pointed to a different beer that just got brewed recently by Bell's called Hazy Hearted IPA. And as many of you know, I don't shy away from a good hazy, so I was in the market to pick one of these things up. But unfortunately, it wasn't found in my area at all. I actually had to resort to calling a family member of mine and having them ship some beers down to me. But just before they were about to ship the beers, I actually found this beer within the hearted variety pack that they sell at a local grocery store of mine. I was ecstatic because I hadn't seen this on the shelf and before it wasn't available except for in the Midwest region of the United States. And so now that it's got made its way down to kind of Southeastern portion, I had a chance to try it and even better, brew it. If you follow my channel, you've probably seen other clone videos I've done on Two Hearted Ale, on Oberon and on Bell's Official. I brewed all of those using their recipes and their yeast. So how do I get their yeast? Well, first let's talk about the recipe. So Bell's is unique as a brewery because they actually put most of the recipes on their website for home brewers. So if you want to pick one up, you can either buy a kit or you can just get the recipe and brew it yourself at your house. So when I found out about the Hazy Hearted IPA, well, that's the first thing I did was go look up the recipe that they have on their website. I hadn't even tried the beer yet, but I knew I was going to brew it. For most of Bell's beers, they actually use their proprietary yeast, which is their house yeast, and Imperial makes it for them. It's called Imperial A62. It's Bell's house yeast. And in this case, I'm not sure if they use this yeast or not in this beer. From what I understand, they use it for most of their beers, except for, for Belgians and possibly even lagers. So chances are they use the same yeast, but on the recipe, it listed three other yeasts. And on their other recipes, it says how they could use their yeast, which is their house yeast. So I'm not really sure if they use their house yeast in this, but we're gonna brew with it. And how are we gonna do that? Well, Bell's is a little unique compared to some commercial breweries because they don't filter their beers. And so there's a little bit of sediment at the bottom of each of the bottles where you can pour the beer out carefully and pour that little bit of sediment, including some yeast, into a small yeast starter. I have a whole video on how to do that that I'm gonna put in the video description below. It's gonna tell you how to ramp up from a very small starter all the way up to a one liter starter and brew with that same beer. And guess what? Bell's yeast is a game changer. If you're trying to replicate a beer of Bell's, use their yeast. I highly recommend it. So I actually did a live demonstration of how to capture and harvest the yeast out of each of these cans. I did that on my YouTube live, which I do on Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you haven't joined us for a live, you should jump on, it's fun. We all have a couple of beers. We, I answer questions live from you in the chat. I'm also gonna be having a lot of different guests this year. So go ahead and try to jump on when you can. So now that we know that we can get the yeast, even though we don't know what it is, and we're gonna brew with it, Let's go over the rest of the recipe. So for this one, we're gonna be using two row white wheat and flaked oats, which is really common for my actual hazy IPAs. They use one ounce of Columbus for bittering at about 45 minutes out of the 60 minute boil. They do uh, Idaho seven and Eldorado hops in a whirlpool. And then they have two rounds of dry hopping. The first one with Mosaic and Sabro and the second one with Galaxy Citra and Sabro. The recipe also gives a water report for Kalamazoo, Michigan is where Bell's Brewery is actually located. And so you can use that, but instead I'm gonna use my standard hazy target water profile to brew this beer. It's pretty similar in most of the aspects, except for the thing you're gonna be looking for no matter how you brew your beer is for the chloride sulfite ratio to be about three to one to two to one. You wanna be higher on the chlorides and about either half or a third of the sulfites and that's the CL versus SO4. So without further ado, let's taste this thing and then let's brew it up. The first thing you're gonna look at is the fact that it's a pretty good solid color. It's got a lot of haze on it and it's keeping the head retention pretty well. I'm gonna go in for some aroma and that's all you get on the nose is fruit. I get a lot of what I think is grapefruit mango flavors, maybe some guava, and then let's go in for the taste. When I tasted this on my live stream, the beer was actually a lot colder. And since it's got to up to a 
a better temperature this time. It's actually a better flavor than I remember it the first time that I cracked a can. So in this case, it's a pretty solid hazy IPA. Have I had better hazy IPAs? Sure, but man, I wouldn't stop myself from having a second one of these. So I'm excited to brew it up and we can compare them at the end of this video to see how I do. But before we get started, I want you all again to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel a lot, helps out this video a lot, and I appreciate every one of you guys. When making the starter, I actually used this canned wort that I did in a previous video. This is like making your own proper starters, right? And so this is a condensed version of a starter. You're gonna add one can plus one jar of water uh, into a liter flask, and then you're gonna pitch your yeast on top of it, and it will make a perfect one liter starter for pennies compared to what you can buy these proper starters at the store. I'll have a link for that video in the description below as well. So first, we're gonna start by milling up our grains. You do not need to mill up the oats, that's just gonna gum up your mill. Secondly, you're also gonna to wanna to use some rice hulls. This is gonna be a thick mash and you might get a stuck sparge without using them. So make sure you add about a half a pound or so in with your mash. Also, for some reason on Bell's recipe, they didn't have a mash temperature. And so in this case, I'm gonna use a similar mash temperature that I use for other hazy IPAs, which is either 152 or 154. For this case, I'm gonna to try to go for a little more mouthfeel. So we're gonna to try to ramp this up to 154 for the mash temperature. I'm also gonna be adding four grams of ascorbic acid into the mash. That helps with preventing oxidation. It'll help scrub out all that oxygen, even if you're not as careful during your transfers into your primary, secondary, or your keg. I do this for most beers, specifically ales that are more susceptible to oxidation, and hazies are about as susceptible as they get. For the rest of the brew day, we're gonna go through it pretty quickly because this isn't really about how to brew the beer, it's about whether I can make this beer taste like the original using their yeast and their recipe. All right, so brew day is basically done. We are about to pitch our yeast, but beforehand I'm gonna throw in my tilt hydrometer here. Throw that in there, and then I have two rounds of dry hops. The first one is going to be at High Krausen, which will be in about two days. The other one will be in about four days, which is about 70% attenuation. So we're actually, instead of just putting one round of dry hops, I have two rounds of dry hops, both with the sous vide magnets. So I'm gonna put them on separate sides, and then I'm gonna remember, I hope, which side I put each hop on. So on this side, I'm gonna put the one I need to drop at High Krausen, and on this side, I'm gonna put the one that I need to do at 70% attenuation. Once my yeast starter was all finished, I went ahead and put it in the fridge to cold crash. Then on brew day, I pulled that out. I decanted off most of the spent beer on the top, leaving just enough to swirl it around and release the yeast off the bottom of the flask. Then I let that warm up to room temperature. Once it was ready to pitch, I went ahead and pitched the yeast into the fermenter. After about 36 hours, it was at high Krausen, and I went ahead and pulled my first round of dry hops, which was mosaic and sabro hops. And then about 70% attenuation or a gravity of 1.021, I went ahead and pulled the second round of hops, which were Galaxy, Citra, and Sabro. I let that sit for about a week, and then I cold crashed it down, transferred it to a keg, and now we're ready to do a side-by-side -side comparison. So let's see how my beer stacks up against the real Hazy Hearted IPA from Bell's. So as you can tell right off the bat, there is a little bit difference in color, which surprised me when I poured these side by side. It is their recipe from their website, and I'm not sure why that theirs is a smidge darker than mine. I used the same percentage that they added, but again, maybe it's not exact for a homebrew recipe. They are both very cloudy and very hazy, which is good. They're both holding a good amount of head retention, and they both look super crushable. So let's go ahead and do what we came here to do and try these side by side. First, we'll go for the aroma. First on the one that I brewed. And that's what I get. All the fruity flavors that you would expect from that hazy IPA. Citrus, grapefruit notes, even a hint of maybe orange or mango. And let's go ahead with the real one from Bell's Hazy Hearted IPA. Same thing, I actually get a hint less of the hop aroma on this one. 
which is a first for me brewing a commercial beer, having mine have more aroma. Usually I have less of that. Part of the aroma depletion could be because these cans may have been sitting on the shelf for some time. So in some cases you can look at the bottom of the can and see when uh, the, the best buy date is. And this says May 19th of 2024. So it should be still good being that it's still March, but for whatever reason, it does have less hop aroma than mine. Maybe just because it is a bit more fresh. So let's go in for the tasting. For this one, I'm gonna try the original first and then we're gonna compare it to the one that I brewed. So we'll go with the Bell's Hazy Hearted first. A little bit of a good bitter note. Not a lot of mouthfeel on this beer. Um, good and juicy, um, but not, it's a little bit more crisp than I probably would have wanted it for a hazy IPA. It does have a good amount of bitterness to it, which I do like in a hazy IPA. Some people like it all juice, but I still want it to have that bitterness bite with some hops. All in all, like I said at the beginning of this video, it is a good hazy IPA. I would definitely have a second one of these, but not my favorite of all hazy IPAs I've ever, ever done before. So I'll, let's compare it to the one that I brewed. Again, same recipe, not sure why the color difference um, could just be the style and brand of malts that they use, but it really shouldn't have been that much different SRM wise. But let's go in for the flavor and see what we think. I still get that uh, bitter note, which I think the bitterness is about equal to them, which is really good. Mine has a little bit more of a mouthfeel to it. And one of the things that I noticed now just thinking about it was the recipe didn't have a mash temperature for um, the original. They had some steeping value, which you would use for, you know, an extract kit, but not for an all grain kit. So I think that recipe is a little bit off. And so we picked 154 for the mash temperature, which actually allows the, some residual sugars to stick around and give it a thicker mouthfeel. So I think that contributes to mine being a little bit more of a creamier mouthfeel that you would expect in a hazy IPA. Maybe their uh, mash temperature is a little bit lower on this one. In addition, I think I get a little bit more of the hops, the hop character, and a lot of the hop fruitier notes in this one when I try and compare them side by side. Tasting them again, it's probably harder to tell than I think. Yeah, I think that they're they're very similar flavor-wise. I think it's just the mouthfeel difference that I'm tasting there. And so for these two, I think they're fairly close, even though they look a little bit further apart in flavor and in bitterness. I think the edge out of the two probably goes to mine only for the fact that I have a little bit more aroma and a little bit more hop flavor. But again, probably because it's fresher. So the two I'd have to say are pretty comparable, even though the looks, it's just, there's definitely a darker tinge to the real one. So you could just up a little bit of those crystal malts in order to get that looking the same way if you wanted to, but I actually prefer the look of this one too and the flavor of it. So if you wanted to brew this beer, I'm gonna have everything you need to know in the video description below as normal. The full recipe, everything will be right down there for you to go check out including the link to Bell's original recipe on their website. So as always, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel a lot. Leave any questions or comments below in the comment section. Happy brewing and cheers. Hey, thanks for watching my video. I really do appreciate it. A way you can support the channel is just by buying me a beer. There's a button right there on the screen and there's a link in the video description below. You can also check out the Merchandise Center store and you can hit the video on the screen right now. You know you want to.